We are now going to look at a very important string processing technique and that is the ability to process each character or each item in the string and we refer to this as iterating over the string. Now remember that if I create our example string my name is a reference to the string David then what I have done is to create a value that is a sequence of characters. And that sequence has position. And so if I look at this from a item point of view, the string D A V I D has position going from left to right and we can think about there as being this sort of imposed order within that sequence. What I would like to be able to do is write a piece of code or write a, an algorithmic process that will allow me to first visit the D, then visit the A, then visit the V, the I, the little d. And so for any string, I want to be able to process that string, say, from left to right. It turns out that there are actually two different ways to accomplish this in Python. And the first is actually very simple and it takes advantage of the fact that strings are sequences. And if you remember when we talked about iteration, the for statement we said is a sequence iterator, which means that our typical way of using the for statement is to say for and then use a loop variable so we may say something like counter in and then we typically use uh, the range function and we might say range 5 and what this means is that we want the counter to take on the values in the resulting sequence that we get from calling the range function with the argument 5 and so range 5 returns the sequence 0 1 2 3 4 and so then counter will take on each of those values one at a time and in a sense iterate a process five times and in addition the value of counter as a variable will change each time and can be used in the processing. And so we can go ahead and create a very simple process to simply print out the value of the counter and we see the values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 printed. Now, what does this have to do with strings? Well, if strings are sequences, then there's no reason why they can't participate in the for statement, and we can do what is called direct iteration. And so I can create a for statement, and this time I'm going to use as my loop variable the identifier item. So for every item in, but now instead of using the range function to create a sequence, I'm going to use the name of the string. In this case, my name is a reference to a string object. So what this says then is for every item in the sequence of characters referred to as my name, I would like to do some processing. And just like with the example up above, if I were to print each of the individual items, what's going to happen is the first character in the word is going to be printed, the second character in the word is going to be printed, and so on. In other words, the item is going to take on each individual character of the string referred to by my name, and for every one of those cases, we'll simply print that individual character. And so, if I execute this for statement, we see that we get a very similar result. First the D, then the A, then the V, then the I, and finally the D. And so, going back to our picture of this string, because this is a sequence, if I allow the for statement to iterate over the items in the sequence, item first of all will be the character D, then item will be the character A, then item will be the character V, then I, then D as we move from left to right. So by default, because strings are ordered from left to right in sequence, the for statement can automatically iterate over that and we call that the ability to directly iterate over the string or 
iteration by item. Now the alternative way to iterate over a string would be to make use of the index values. And so remember that these positions are indexed starting at 0 and in this case going up to 4. Now we know that 0 through 4 is also the result of performing the simple range function giving 5 as the bound and therefore by default 0 is the starting point. So if I were to use the range function and give it the value 5 it would actually produce one at a time the values in the sequence that represent the positions of the string. If you look at this further what you'll notice is that 5 happens to be the length of the string. And so what I can actually do to create an iteration that will produce the positions represented by the string no matter how long the string is is I can say something like for index in range starting at 0 going up to but not including the length of the string. Let's just make sure we understand what we've done here. Index is going to be the loop variable. The range function is going to use the length of the string as its upper bound. The lower bound will automatically be 0 because we're using that default version. And so this range function, if my name is the string DAVID, the len of my name is 5, and the range function will return the sequence 0 through 4. But 0 through 4 is exactly the index values of the individual positions of the string. And so what I can do is I can print my name, and I can use the indexing operator using index as the variable. And the first time through, when index is 0, I'll print my name 0. The next time, when index is 1, I'll print my name 1. The next time when index is 2, I'll print my name 2, and so on, and the result will be the same as we saw before. In this case, we're doing what's called iteration by index. And so we're using the index value to iterate over, and then using the index operator itself to be able to access that particular position. Either of these two methods for iterating over a string will work just fine in the most simple case, but as we get more complex processing it might very well be the case that you have to choose one or the other. But iteration over a string is something that you will do very often and it's good to understand the basics of how that processing works.